Gabby from Julie's Canine Academy. I'm joined here by Lucas, the German Shepherd Mixed Puppy, and we wanted to talk to you about crate training. Why we do it and how you can do it at home. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people will actually crate train their dog in the beginning when it's a very small puppy uh, or it's, it's a new rescue dog who may not be used to living inside of a household yet. And they do that because a dog will naturally not want to go to the bathroom in their den area where they eat, where they sleep. They don't want to soil that. Uh, so we can use a crate to kind of hack nature and use that to our advantage. They don't want to go to the bathroom in there. You put them in there when you can't watch them and they will learn to hold their bladder more effectively. Really nice. But a lot of people, after their dog is house trained, will choose to get rid of the crate, put it on Craigslist, whatever, uh, because they're like, well, my dog's potty trained, what else do I need it for? And it's true that if your dog is potty trained and totally not destructive and just an absolute angel or perhaps a robot, you can leave them loose in the house when you're gone. Uh, I prefer to not take that chance. The reason I use crates with my dogs, who are adult dogs, they are house trained, they're non-destructive, they're overall pretty good dogs, is because I don't want to have them have the chance to make a mistake, like eating a piece of foil wrapped around some meat from dinner that maybe was put in the trash can and the trash can wasn't closed all the way. Uh, you know, humans are not robots either. We do, we do make mistakes. So I'd rather not chance a mistake on either of our ends, you know. My dog is trained not to go in the trash. I am trained myself to close the door to the trash can every time I use it. But mistakes happen and I don't want my dog to pay for it with his life. <laughs> so that's one reason to use it. That's, that's my soapbox. Another reason is to prevent dangerous or nuisance behaviors that the dog will practice when you're not home. So maybe you think your dog's a perfect angel, so you get a nanny cam, you put it up, and you watch your dog while you're at work one day, and you see him pacing by the front door, anxiously whining, maybe looking out the window and barking at neighbors when they walk by. And you say, I didn't know he did this stuff. Um, but you never know what they do when you're not around to watch. You could also have a dog who's destructive and who wants to you know, rip up your couch and throw the feathers everywhere. You know, things like that. Counter surfing for dinner. You just want to avoid all that stuff. So why not just have your dog have a nice safe space where they can have a comfy bed. They can have a calm toy that you freeze with their dinner overnight. Nice, something to work on there. They can have a water dish there. It's just a nice, secure apartment for your dog. Their own personal haven. That's a really good thing to have for your dog, for every single dog. And even if your dog is, again, perfect, which they probably aren't, you're gonna to wanna to have your dog crate trained no matter what, in case you can do it at the vet, the groomer, travel, go on an airplane. <laughs> There's just no reason not to teach your dog to be comfortable in a crate. Right, buddy? You see that? You see? So I wanna show you really quick, really quick and dirty version of how to teach your dog to be comfortable in a crate. If your dog is food motivated, you can use that because we wanna create a really positive experience with this area for them. So they want to do, you want them to associate their crate with safety, security, you know, if they're afraid of fireworks, they can go in there and hide from that, make it a comfortable dark place for them. And also you can associate it with food. I feed my dogs in their kennels. All my training dogs get fed in their kennels. They have their water in there. Um, I don't have a, a bed in this one, but usually they have Primo pads in there, which are a nice foam material. If your dog's destructive, they can't destroy those. If your dog's not destructive, you can get them those really cushy ones from TJ Maxx. You know, make it, make it their own space, so. Lucas. Break. Good boy. Let me show you, Lucas, really quick how we teach a dog to go in a crate. So first I'll see if Lucas wants to take some of these treats. Lucas, hi. Yes, hello. And my dog will be on a leash. Lucas. Hey, kiddo. You can simply start by tossing treats in the crate and having them encourage, go get them, go get them. Get them. Good boy. Good boy. Hesitant to go in, even when I threw treats in there, so I just held steady pressure on his leash, which your dog should be wearing this whole time, until he went in. Then I released the pressure, told him he was a good boy, and let him get those cookies. Good job, Lucas. Break. Very nice. I like to attach a word to it early, so I'd say, Lucas. Hi, sweetie. Lucas, kennel. Good boy. Toss the food in there. Nice job, buddy. Good boy, Lucas. If your dog knows down, I use that immediately. My dog goes in, I tell them to down and relax. Good boy. And then they stay in there until I release them. Lucas. Good. Break. Break is his release word. It means you can get out of the kennel now. You're free to go. Good boy. 
Nice job. Ready? Yeah, you shake it up. Lucas, sit. Good. Kennel. Good. Down. Good boy. Nice. So pattern that behavior over and over again. Have your dog learn to go in and out and in and out and in and out and wait to be released. Good boy. And then when you actually leave for work, the first time you use this with your dog, go and shut the door on them. Good job, Lucas. Leave them there with a the comb to work on and with their breakfast in it. And I'm gonna shut the door to my dog's kennel. I'm not gonna baby, I'm not, oh, Lucas, goodbye. I'm gonna miss you so much, baby. I'll see you later. Bye, Lucas. Bye, Lucas. Bye, Lucas. Bye, baby. Yeah, you're not doing your dog any favor by doing that. Instead, Shut the door on your dog after you give them their calm. Make sure that they're set up with water in a bucket. And then walk out the door. No, no baby talking, no crying about it. Just good boy and then leave. All right, ready? So when you get home, kind of the same protocol. I'm gonna walk through the door. I'm gonna take off my shoes. I'm gonna take my time. If he's whining, I will address it. You can use a, a bonker or tap on the crate. Good oh boy. Here we go whine here, you know that. I'm gonna walk through the door, take care of my needs, and then finally I'll go up to Lucas. I'm not baby talking him. I'm opening the door. So unlatch your door. If he sticks his nose out, I'm gonna shut it right on his nose. We're not gonna slam it on the dog. Good boy. You wanna be kind, but also firm. Good. We've done some work with this with Lucas. He's doing very well with it. But if your dog's the type to wanna nose open the kennel and explode out, that is really not appropriate. Address that before they even leave the kennel. So the second that their nose comes out, go and shut it on them. And then wait again. And repeat this over and over again until your dog learns to respect this invisible boundary right here and wait to be recalled out. Good. Break. Nice job, Lucas. Good boy. Good job. Lucas, kennel. Good job. Down. Good. So it's really that simple. Teach your dog to go in a kennel. Teach them to like it. Maybe feed all their meals in there. Give them things to chew on in there. Make it their safe space. Make it comfortable. When you leave them, no baby talking. Don't make it a big deal. When you come home, no baby talking. Don't make it a big deal. Just calmness the whole way through. It'll really pay off in dividends. We want a pattern of really calm behavior in the kennel for your sake and for your dog's sake. Good boy, Lucas. Good job. Now I'll give him time to rest. And when I'm ready, he'll be ready to go out and play with me again. Good boy.